All right, so um, in this video, we want to uh, use what we know about web scraping to take a text from Project Gutenberg and do a little bit of natural language processing on that text. Um, along the way, we're going to use uh, some ideas about list comprehensions um, in, in uh, performing some of the NLTK stuff. So just as a quick reminder um, that we have lists and we can generate these lists using these things called list comprehensions. So for example, if I want to make a list out of each of the elements in this uh, list of strings, Uncle Stever has a gun, for example, I can do that with the syntax, I for I, and, and what we'll do is create a list for out of each of the things in this uh, in this list of strings so and we can refer to these things just like we have before in terms of the index in the list uh, notice that each of these is its own string here um, so this is basically where we're going to kind of move to have a text of our own um, <clears throat> the other thing that we can do is uh, we can lowercase uh, each of the things in the list because it's a string um, and we would create a list of all of these this sentence lowercase with a list comprehension that says take everything and lowercase it uh, in a and now you see everything is lowercase okay so to begin uh, scraping the text we'll import uh, our standard libraries matplotlib uh, requests and beautiful soup um, this is a URL to the text file of um, Newton's book on the chronology of ancient kingdoms. We, we get that object as a response using requests. Um, we check to see that it went through, uh, and it did. It's a response object, and it gave us a 200, so it worked. Um, then we turn it into a beautiful soup object, All right? Uh, we're looking at the content of that response. And, um, okay, so I just have one big thing that is the text of, um, of that book. Um, and I'm going to extract the text elements from it. And you see that now I have... Uh, string <clears throat> 50, 550,924 strings actually that make up this uh, this text and um, if you look at the first hundred of those things we see the title now there's um, there's an issue here though we have these elements um, like this forward slash R and N um, and maybe I don't want these these things. I just want the text itself. So we're going to use a little bit of regular expressions to go through and uh, just pick off the text elements that we want in this um, in this text. So regular expressions are, are like uh, shorthand ways for navigating strings. Um, and there's a regular expression library that we're going to bring in called uh, RE. And for example, if I have this, uh, this string, A, um, who knew that Johnny Depp was an undercover police officer uh, with Richard Grieco? Um, maybe, for example, I want to just get words that start with uh, D, uh, or strings starting with D. And so the regular expression for that would be in parentheses um, D, because that's what I'm looking for it to start with. And then uh, this slash W plus means anything that has a uh, word, like word elements. So um, uh, we're picking up any uh, string, and this means after that anything that follows uh, any string. So this is the regular expression, 
and then we use the library the find all. I pass my regular expression to it and I say where I want the regular expression to be applied. And you see that it goes through this sentence and sure enough the only thing that starts with a lowercase d uh, is right here. So if I wanted an uppercase d I would just change that regular expression to include the uppercase d loop through that same sentence and now I find uh, just dep uh, as because it's just an uppercase D. Um, then what I can do is I can apply uh, groups of things. So like all the D's, I can pass a, a list containing lowercase and uppercase D. And now if I find all, I get both of those things. And there's a whole, there's a whole bunch of other ways that I can structure these regular expressions. And just a simple search for some kind of, um, uh, for a cheat sheet on regular expressions or a little tutorial on regular expressions will help you with, with more of it. But this is just the basics about how the regular expression library works. You, you structure a regular expression and then you push it through uh, the list of strings that you're looking at. So what we're going to do is we're going to just look for the word elements in um, that text that we've scraped. And now we have, okay, we have, it seems like we've tokenized that text. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I want to do is uh, show you how to use the NLTK uh, regular expression tokenizer. Uh, this is part of the Natural Language Toolkit. So we can create the tokenizer by passing the regular expression in the argument here. Um, and then apply that tokenizer to the text. We're going to tokenize this text. And if we look at that, we get the same kind of thing that we did above using the regular expressions library. Um, the next thing that we might want to do is go ahead and lowercase all of these things. So just, uh, just as we did above, we're going to create an empty list. And then in this list, I'm going to loop through all of the things in the text and lowercase them. So this list tokens, I'm going to loop through it and pop each of these words lowercase into this new list called words. And if I look at the first two th 10 things now, you see that I have the same uh, first 10 words, but uh, they're lowercase. Okay, the last, uh, the last thing that we might want to do to structure this text is to remove these things called stop words. And remember, stop words were some words that were kind of connectors and didn't really add any meaning. So NL2K comes with a list of stop words. And so, for example, if we look at that set of stop words, we see all of these words that uh, NL2K considers as stop words. Um, and again, what we're going to do is we're going to remove these from the text. Um, so we create a list uh, of these stop words here called stop words. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a list comprehension where I loop through um, my text um, and say as long as the, each of the, go through each of the pieces of my text and compare it to this list. If it's not in this list, if it, in other words, if it's not a stop word, then I'll create this new list, I'll pop it in this new list filtered text. And here we have all the lowercase words from that text that, um, that are not stop words. Uh, you notice that we've removed uh, the and of um, yeah. So finally, um, we're going to do some visualizations of the text. Um, and I want to remember to have NLTK imported. I'm going to create, uh, from this filtered text list, I'm going to create a text object in NLTK. Um, if you look at that, that's just a similar kind of thing. And then I'm going to draw a frequency distribution, uh, of the text. And 
Um, so this creates a frequency distribution object that we see as an NLTK dot probability dot frequency distribution. Um, then we can do a bunch of things to this FDIST, including look at the most common words. Uh, we can find occurrences of specific words and we can draw pictures of it. So, for example, if I wanted to plot the, the top 30 uh, most common words in the text, I can look at here, it seems, years, year, Egypt, king, reign, first, and so on. Um, similarly, we can add an argument to this plot to be cumulative, and that's showing the total as we go along, how, uh, how much of the text is contributed to by these, this set of words. Um, we can do some other things that we, to the text. We can tag the part of speech, and this, this tells us um, what kind of uh, a word each of these guys are in terms of their part of speech, like uh, natural nouns, um, etc. You can find more information about this in the NLTK documentation. Uh, we can also look for similar words in the text, like if I wanted to figure out what in this text is similar to the word king. I can find common context for words, so I see that king and brother are both here, so I, maybe I want to find what kinds of things they're both around, and here are some common contexts for these two words, king and brother. Um, if I want to look at, remember this text is just a list of all the words in the, in the book. Um, if I want to look at the dispersion of some of these words, um, I can use the dispersion plot. So if I want to see where in the text do, the, do these 10 words occur, um, it seems that most of them, the ones that I chose here, just the 500 to 510 uh, time, seems to happen consistently through the text. However, something like and, at, the, same, he, supports, uh, supports and observable happen only in the, begin in the very beginning of the text, and it, it seems like we don't see them again in the rest of the text. We can also do something like uh, compute the lexical richness of the text. For example, what this does is it, it compares the overall length of the text to the length of the unique words in the text. So it seems that um, we have about 19% uh, lexical richness. So that means like 19% um, of the text is original unique words used over and over. Um, we can count individual words. For example, this word kings seems to happen 266 times. And if we wanted to figure out how much of the text that word uh, involves, the percentage of text that is, is taken up with kings, um, we can do a similar computation where we're counting kings, dividing it by the total number of text. And if we multiply it by 100, then we get the answer as a percent. So it seems like 0.5 uh, 4% of the text uh, is kings. We can do other things like look for long words um, by comparing the length of everything. So here we're creating a list comprehension that loops through all the words and just grabs the ones that are longer than 10. And if we look at that, we get back these, this list of words that all has more than 10. Um, we can look at bigrams. For example, uh, if I have this list, more said than done, I can print a list of the uh, bigrams here with NLTK.bigrams. So you could do a similar thing with your text and then find the top uh, bigrams using the uh, frequency distribution. Um, we can also find collocations in the text. Uh, these are things that happen together. And finally, um, another way to visualize the text is using these word clouds. So um, we need to make sure that you have uh, the word cloud library uh, installed. So if you, if you don't use, make sure you use, you can use pip install uh, word cloud. 
Um, and I'm going to bring in a CSV file of the 21 Jump Street guest stars that I created in the last video uh, and saved as a CSV file. And if you remember, this is um, the actors, the characters they played, the seasons, the episode, and the title. And I'm going to create a word cloud of the titles um, in 21 Jump Street. So to do so, I'm just going to first create this word cloud thing with, and I'm going to just pass that the background is going to be black. And then I ask it to generate a word cloud from strings. I, I convert, make sure that my, uh, my column of data is our string objects. Uh, and I'm just pat and I make sure that it's the, cause I wanted to create a word cloud of the title. So I pass the title column in, um, and if I look at this, it's a word cloud object. And the way to visualize this is to use the M show, uh, from matplotlib. And I just, so I create a figure, uh, and I pass, in this case, I make a, a specific figure size. Then I ask the uh, matplotlib to show me the image of the word cloud and I turn the axes uh, off. I don't, the axes are not relevant here. And there we go. It seems that poison was often used in the titles of 21 Jump Street, one bullet, gotta, you know, heavy stuff. So, um, there's uh, some tools to both access uh, text and perform some using a little bit of regular expressions, um, also visualizing it and uh, performing some uh, basic natural language processing uh, tasks on a given text.